In this sound design tutorial we will use the TTT formula to create a cinematic riser sound effect. The three T's in the formula stands for texture, tonality and transformation. Let's dive into it. I often hear from my students that one of the biggest challenges when it comes to sound design is to turn the ideas in their minds into design sounds. The TTT formula is a great tool for just that challenge because it will help you to translate your ideas into smaller more understandable parts. So the great thing with this formula is that you can start with an abstract idea of a sound and then with the formula break that idea down into a process with simple steps for how to create that sound. The simple idea of this sound was to start with something soft like a haunted whisper sound and then over time build it up into a big amount of energy and tension with a rising pitch. So I took that simple and kind of vague idea and translated that into a process with the formula. The first T stands for texture. This part of the formula covers the main characteristics of the sound. You simply just imagine what source that main character of the sound could be made of. Will it be made of wind blowing, friction in different objects or maybe granular synths? In this case I choose my own voice. The next T of the formula stands for tonality. This part covers what tonal, if any, the sound should have. I knew I wanted something with a rising pitch but what should it be made of? I could have made it with sine waves in a synth but I wanted something with built-in characters so I decided to try to bow different objects and see what I can come up with. And the final T is about how to transform those source recordings you have decided you need in the first two T's of the formula and turn them into the final designed sound. You can use filters, distortion, reverb, automation, modulation, yeah any kind of process you can imagine basically. In my case with a horror riser sound I needed to create the rising pitch with some plugins because I couldn't do that with the type of source I had picked. And since the idea was to start small I also thought that automation of the stereo field from mono to wide stereo could work, automate some kind of filter to make it build over time and maybe some kind of feedback loop in the end to get that last push of energy. So that was a translation part of the process. Instead of just having a vague idea of I want to make a horror riser that starts small and builds into big energy, I now had a process for how to do that. I would start with record my voice, then I would record the bowing of the metal objects and then I would process those recordings with some pitch shift, filters and a feedback loop. So let's take a look at how I did that. Last night I had a great chat with my daughter about Harry Potter and I got so inspired by the snake whispering from those movies. <sighs> So for the recording I went with something inspired by that. Next I bowed some metal objects I found around my house with a cello bow. I ended up using this small metal tray that had a tonal quality that I was looking for. If you want some more tips about how to turn ordinary sounds into designed ones like I do in this video, I have a free guide for you linked in the description below. This covers my best tips for turning ordinary sounds into designed ones. A lot of people have said that they really like the tips and tricks in there and found it useful, so grab it for free if you like to. So here is the session, I have the voice over here and the bowed metal over here, I have just edited them a little bit and cleaned them up a little bit, so without any further processing it sounds like this. So it's a cool vibe, it's a right motion and the character is correct in my opinion. But we need to make that final part of the formula, the last T, the transformation T, in order to make this a, into a cohesive sound effect with that rising pitch. So I started to use uh, elastic pitch here and I automated uh, the pitch up here. And I also automated the feedback over here. So I used this both for pitch repitching and the feedback loop. So with that it sounds like this. So immediately way more into the rising sound effect realm that we are looking for. But I, I felt that we could do some more. Uh, we had typed in that we needed some... Um, stereo processing so I uh, added a, a house effect that I automated the delay of and also a stereo plugin that I automated the width of. So with those two it sounds like this.
Now you can hear it is really starts in the middle and then comes up really really wide in the end. So a cool effect to use on both risers and, and whooshes in my opinion. And then the big bulk of the processing is already done. I just want to add a little bit of energy with chips and then just tame a little bit of the harshness from the metal tray and also from my voice with Sood. So with chips and Sood it sounds like this. <laughs> And then I did some uh, denoising uh, a little bit more with M Spectral Dynamics. And then I just put everything into a little bit of space with Pro R. Sounds like this. <laughs> And the final piece of the puzzle is Volcano 3 that goes into Pro L2. Volcano 3 I automate the drive and the filter cutoff and Pro L is basically just a safety limiter in the end. So the final sound is this. <laughs> So the last T here, the transformation T, takes the sound from this. Into this. So the final T really transformed the sounds from just two different recordings into a cohesive sound effect. But we couldn't have done that processing in the final third T if we hadn't done the correct stages before that. So a good idea leads to good source leads to a good transformation and that ends up to be a really cool sound effect.